All right, we are recording. Uh, so again, thanks for joining. So we have uh, uh, Mr. Sridhar Govardhan as the mentor today. I'll do a very quick intro um, you know, from his profile. He's a senior director and head of information security at Flipkart. Um, and before this, he was the CISO of Wipro Limited. Um, and his professional experience is more than 20 years in business critical you know, cyber security, cyber defense, data protection, regulatory compliance. Uh, pretty much, pretty much the entire spectrum, um, and he has had a long and distinguished career in information security. Um, he has multiple degrees from Pittsfilani, multiple uh, patents pending uh, in security, and he has co-authored a book on insider threat, uh, published by Forbes and DSCI. So, with that. I would like to hand it over to uh, to Mr. Sridhar to take it away. Thank you, Rajiv, and good morning all. And I'm really happy to see so many of you on a Sunday morning. And thanks for people who presented to me their pitch and then uh, kind of the discussed on their pitching. What is it and how is it? So I'll make this uh, session very uh, interactive so that you can also share the views and then see because I I I just wanted to. So, uh, let me present that presentation. Give me a minute. Yeah. Ajay, can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So let me give how um, i mean you guys are all veterans in the industry so i don't need to tell how to do a sales pitch but let me tell how to understand a cso and then make a pitch because um, i myself being in this side of the world for a good amount of time i know uh, why and how and what really makes a good sales pitch and why cso's buy and why they buy a product or a solution or a vendor over the other vendors, so there is good amount of reason. Let's let's dive into that. I wanted to be more interactive, so please be uh, feel free yourself to unmute and then ask me questions wherever uh, I can un answer as the individual. I mean, no questions on uh, why why my organization is not buying this, why my organization didn't buy that, and all. So this is where it is. Let's dive deep. Now, the way I wanted to uh, present this is. Why don't you guys come and sit on the CISO seat and then say and look how to uh, purchase a product, how to purchase a service, how to purchase a platform, or how to onboard a vendor itself? So, this is what I want to show you guys because you know a lot about sales, you know a lot about um, how to make RFP and how to respond to RFP and how to present a sales pitch. So, you you all pretty much know that. Let, let, let me make you sit this side of the chair and then see. Why I put a hot seat is there is a good reason because um, there are pressures for all of us. So that's what it is. And let's look at who's a CISO. I mean, all of us uh, know that CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, but uh, he also is a is a person who handles a portfolio. He is also a person who has um, a responsibility to fulfill. He also has accountability to manage in his organization. And this is how we see a CISO. A, a kind of powerful person in the organization who has, uh, at least in the recent days, he has a good uh, amount of connect with the leadership, good uh, reporting uh, requirements to the board, and good budget. So uh, that that's what it matters for vendors at the last. But um, all of you agree to this view? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Good. And how many of us see this view? Mm, not many, I think. Huh? Not many, at least I don't see it that way, but it's good good perspective to see. See that. So, a CISO has a lot of business pressure, please understand. And whenever yeah, the business team walks across the CISO's office and sees a lot of vendors, I mean, a team of vendors sitting there, they know something is going to come, which is going to put a productivity issue, going to put something which is going to be a showstopper for the business. This is the pressure which we have behind us, where we kind of 
fight battles between uh, the the technology what we want to implement and the uh, business which says that this technology is counterproductive this technology is uh, what do you say is is going to ca cause a lot of um, hardship for people to be productive and this is going to be ca causing a lot of hardship for my people when they want to be more um, uh, seamless access uh, data anywhere to everywhere all those things so this is the biggest issue what CISO faces when when you're making a pitch please be cognizant of this factor is is your product really really going to uh, amper his business in in case if it is going to do then work with him or give him that comfort saying that this is how we we work with earlier organization this is how we we kind of overcome these issues instead of trying to make a pitch which says glorified view and if you are if you are trying to sell let me give me a minute If if you are focusing this side of things and glorified view of CISO and then trying to sell, you are missing this part. So the decisions are made here. Please be aware of it. Second, second is the compliance requirements, which some CISOs do buy products and solutions for compliance. So if, if at all, if your uh, product is to do that, be aware it, 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 it is only going to be momentary. It is go going to be for a very short period of time, your product will be used because once that compliance is achieved, there is no value for you. So you should be very, very clear uh, in, in achieving your objective and especially the startups who are only working for compliance driven you have to elevate yourself and then also prove that I'm there to support you beyond, beyond compliance. Compliance, CISOs look at it. Compliance is not going to protect the organization from cyber attack. Compliance is not going to be, let's be very clear. Compliance is there to prove, yes, we are secure and give the due diligence uh, assessments what a compliance, uh, uh, a compliance office will come and do an assessment or a kind of a, a requirement which comes for a GDPR. All these are all driven for a reason for example if if uh, those who have been there uh, more than two decades will know that a SOX came every vendor used to put a chapa saying that we are SOX compliant uh, product we are SOX compliant uh, platform we are SOX compliant vendor can we put that uh, what do you say uh, tag today and then sell a product no it is not so the, the compliance driven world is very short lived next is board and senior leadership pressure so there are good amount of um what do you say requirements from board and senior leadership to manage and maintain security at a very adequate level with very minimal business impact and the, these are all the constraints which a CISO works uh, behind behind the scene these are all the constraints which have been put for a CISO to operate but uh, a majority of CISOs forget all these things and then look at vendors uh, majority of the vendors also look at only the front face of the CISO and then work with them. This is where a lot of uh, gaps bridge between. And if you see successful companies in the world, I don't want to name the largest companies, right? They work with the CISO behind the scene also. They work with them. Uh, I, I could uh, put it across very uh, openly saying that the Microsoft. If you see, they have been so successful even in security in spite of a lo lo lot of issues inherently with them also because they work with the organization behind. They connect with them and then work with them to support what is required to make them successful. Security vendors, most of them I've seen, they just sell the product and then uh, wait for you to come and ask you solutions, more solutions, more solutions. Doesn't work. And the biggest uh, enemy of a CISO is a CIU, who always has, see, the, the, this, these two roles have emerged in such a way that uh, the CIOs core 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 uh, accountability and responsibility in organization is to maintain availability and provide the productivity uh, requirements to the enterprise and that is what his business pressure is and the CISO's pressure is to curtail that whatever he's trying to do anything to everything if he says that i want to go in a data anywhere data everywhere uh, mode the first person to say no would be a CISO and it is it is not a uh, good relationship both of them maintain at any point of personally it will be a very good relationship and i do enjoy that but professionally they have a very what is it um 
it's it like a mother in law and daughter in law relationship always there is something which is which is which is against them then the the the, uh, the relationship is uh, built such that there is a good amount of segregation of duties good amount of uh, conflict of interests to be avoided a ciso wants always uh, his initiative to fly first the cio uh, sorry uh, cio has that mandate ciso is always to look at what risk it carries what what could happen if these things fail what could happen if these things are misused by a employee or or are kind of that becomes a threat vector so there are a lot of no no no's being put by a ciso that is when the cio is the biggest uh, villain in, in in the scene behind having said that he is also supporter of uh, security because the two people will be standing in front of a board or or management if things go wrong or only these two gentlemen or or these two um, uh, Individuals who will be who will be responsible and answering uh, what is what is what what went wrong, why it went wrong, what what has to be done, well, who is responsible. All those questions would be answered by this two gentlemen. And so nowadays there is a good partnership, but still there is a lot of conflict which will which will come out. And I have seen uh, just going back, I have seen people uh, security vendors who sell security solution to CIO. CIA will definitely buy it for this reason, compliance reason, and definitely will implement only for this reason. And it is there, but it is not there. That's the way people implement if it is implemented by a CIA. And the last is the vendors who who are always putting pressure on him to buy the products and buy more products and buy more features. That becomes a more challenge for him because he cannot have more and more products put in in, in, in the endpoint, more and more products put in the network, more and more products put in the uh, environment to just to solve one issue, which is which is take for example, if if how many uh, if you take the historically the issues of the financial fraud, how many solutions are there in financial to avoid financial fraud? One, two, three. But today, to solve a security problem, how many solutions we have? Hundreds and hundreds of solutions. Hundreds of uh, security pro products has to be deployed in an environment to solve only one issue, security issue. For financial uh, problem solving, we have a good uh, financial package and good auditing team. The job is done. But we have so many vendors, uh, so many security solutions. That is where, uh, even in my earlier discussion, I've told, look at it as a platform, sell it as a platform. Don't sell it as an individual product. This, the more and more you add an individual product, it is it is a challenge for even for a CISO to implement and then maintain and sustain it. And you cannot build a, a battalion of team to manage all those things. We'll come to that later. Any questions on this? And definitely the last is a cost pressure. You cannot, we cannot continuously buy. I have seen vendors who say that no, no, no. We that 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 factor newly been detected. You need to buy this top up for that solution. I don't have. Um, I mean, people don't have budget for asking every now and then saying that no, I need to augment that. You need to augment that. Doesn't doesn't work. That is where you lose the trust of the CISO. Also saying that hey guys, this is what we bought around one year back. Now you are saying I need to add another. Uh, feature to it. So it doesn't work. Either your cost model has to change so that you augment that as and when required, or you have to uh, kind of build a partnership and then say that okay, let us look at the cost at the uh, different way when 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 we reach there. Microsoft is good in that. Any questions on that? Uh, hi, Shida. This is Rajiv. Uh, not a question, but I have a comment uh, th that I was wondering if you can address. So a particular challenge I think we've talked about several times is uh, in this context of uh, cybersecurity startups that is trying to build a point solution for a very specific problem. Right, be it DRC compliant, I mean DRC or be it email or anything else, like the pictures we heard. They're building a very, they're starting with a very point problem solution, right? And then they have this challenge of competing with the the big uh, uh, security vendors or even the other Microsofts and IBMs that have this platform security solution where everything comes as a plug and play. So how, I mean, how do you? I don't know if you're going to address that. How can a Cybersecurity startup, sort of uh, in the early days, compete with a big overall um, solution from an IBM or a Microsoft. Okay, got you, Rajiv. See, Rajiv, the one of the goodness of a startup is you guys are very fast in adopting your uh, solution quickly, and you are very fast in bringing that solution to the market within months or weeks. 
but the large enterprise right they take years together to come out to a market the classic example could be a simple phishing email detection and then reporting and resolving that phishing issue in the platform itself a click of a button today microsoft can do that two years back startups have developed that solution and then launched it individually and then companies can use it so you have to capitalize that as quickly as possible and that is your strength that is your strength to do it if if we are only focusing on that point solution and then uh, kind of selling that over a period of time either um, if if it is a very niche uh, capability what what uh, large vendor sees you will be acquired or if you are if you are if there is a very uh, what do you say uh, easily developable capability into the platform the large vendor will definitely build it and then uh, capable so i'll tell you one example ibm if i want a capability to be added to my any of the ibm products right they have a very simple rule around uh, 43 or 50 plus i don't remember the number customers in their top tier has to ask for that same capability for them to pick it up and then develop even if i shout at the rooftop uh, saying that i need this i am a largest customer i have been consuming your services for years together they don't build this capability until otherwise the 50 uh, some 40 plus customers ask that same feature to be added then only the large vendor will take it up for resolving that feature set but in a startup the moment i say this as a challenge and they figure it out yes this this has a good market potential they will just build it and then launch it very very next build or or at least whenever they're ready to go in mvp stage itself that's the beauty about it but having that same product for a long time you're just waiting for a large vendor to build it and then launch it in their package and the moment we realize that uh, the earlier it is better and you can add on uh, continuously look out what what are the challenges the other um, uh, customers are facing or the same customer is uh, talking to you in a different uh, challenge you you augment that feature with another capability you augment with another layer of uh, solution for it over a period of time you should you should build a platform of all those things you take a theme saying that i am a email service provider clearly call out that and add your capability to augment with more and more uh, capability to address that uh, problem statement in that domain so you, once you build a large platform right then you have you, you nobody can shake you you have been acquired the company so uh, the same capability if it is released by microsoft the customer who is supporting you may not even uh, endorse you because that's uh, capability is available to you it is built in it is not bolted on so a lot of uh, inherent uh, issues will come if you have integrated with it so th- those are all things which will go away and slowly you will lose the customers to the large player because they will just give it for free in the next version of it or the next capability got it thank you so i mean to summarize uh, pick a pick a point pick a niche that the big guys aren't doing it today because you guys are small and nimble you can move really fast keep working on it you know potentially work with the big guys to integrate it through their offerings if not make sure that you keep accelerating as fast as possible before the big guys recognize it and replace you okay. so also you need to understand not all cso's are of the same uh, background same you know, there is no formal training for a cso if you take um a cio his trajectory has been very uh, well known even a cto is in been architect and then he will be elevated into a different level and then he will become enterprise architect then he has a good potential to become a cto uh, cto cso never had any formal background either they come from it or they come from uh, business or they come from a risk or worst case they come from business so you should know what are the tribes of ciso when you are going to make a presentation and i have seen today uh, variants of presentations being made where the call outs has been either too technical when you are sitting the other side of the ciso is is a business person you are losing it when you see uh, when you talk to business then if a ciso is a too technical then he will you will lose him so what is the right balance to make is what you should understand and trust me this 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 presentations i have seen at least two times from most of you you have canned packages which you try to make my uh, humble submission is customize it to the uh, need who the ciso is asking for customize it to have uh, kind of a 60 40 ratio 
Sixty percent is your standard. Forty percent is the customized slides. What you're going to make. So those those out of ten slides, if you plan to make four slides, customize it to the CISO whom you're going to meet or uh, the the stakeholder whom you're going to meet. See, getting a time from CISO, many people think it's it's a big challenge. I cannot get it and all. It's 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 not a rocket science unless otherwise you have the right connect and then make it a right um, tap at that connect and then get your connects uh, work for you and then you have a pitch which has been made then that's the that's the start point of it so let's look at what are all the tribes of CISOs who the CISO security as an enabler this is the uh, tribe which strongly believes in business and these are all the people who come from business background so, uh, kind of a practice person who's been elevated as a CISO or, or a person who's kind of uh, uh, coming from a song sales background or who's been working as a head of some function or a vertical in, in a BU has been made as a CISO. So he is a person who will, will strongly saying that security is a business uh, enabler and we are there to support business, which is absolutely true. And every CISO should have the DNA. But understand this CISO is not going to buy products uh, to block productivity. This CISO is not going to buy product which is going to be uh, hindrance to this business. This CISO is not going to implement anything which is against the company's principle. So you have to understand what is this tribe all about and how do I ensure that uh, I talk to him in the same language and I tell him these challenges, what you have can be also be resolved with this, this, this way of doing it. Let's look at the next tribe. Security as a technology. This is a CISO who comes from absolutely tech background and he loves technology and he will implement technology for uh, what do you say for anything to everything. He would if you go and talk to the CISOs, he will have all the variants of technology in his uh, backyard and he will implement anything to everything which which uh, which looks shiny objects, which has a very glossy finish. This CISO's uh, problem is um, you will not be able to meet the objective of giving him the ROI, showing him the ROI because he he changes his mindset very frequently. He sees your product, he loves it today and something comes up which is very shiny tomorrow, he will be loving that point of uh, solution. So difficult to manage, but you have to give him the tech aspects of it when you go and show him the nuts and bolts of your product and make him feel saying that, yes, this is the coolest one to implement and then uh, sustain. Security as a compliance. So this is this CISOs are all compliance driven. So they would uh, ensure that I am always compliant to the, the regulations. I am always compliant to the policies, what has been defined from. So these are the CISOs who, who have a DNA of either a risk background or they are they are aligned with the CRO, the chief risk organization, or they are more driven by legal team. So they are very, very uh, compliance driven. You can tell them that uh, this product, when you implement, these are all the compliance objectives you are going to meet. And these are all the solutions which will adhere to this compliance. And this is how you can pull out compliance from it. They would love your product. They would definitely uh, give you space to show and demonstrate that. Any questions so far? And there are CISOs who are very cost conscious. So they want to, Display, uh, I mean, when you go there, you should be displaying him every penny what is going to uh, be made out of it when, when you talk about uh, product or when you talk about a solution, saying that, how do I get this? They will ask you in depth details saying that if I implement this, what will be the ROI? How much threat, uh, threat I will be saying, saving from this? These are all people who come from a little bit of financial background or aligned with the CFO organization. So they have been questioned on every penny they are going to spend and there will be questions saying that show me the ROA for uh, implementing this. So this uh, CISOs you have to be crystal clear saying that these are all the threat vectors you're going to address. This is the reduction in the uh, someone said just uh, sometime back in the presentation saying that I can reduce 30 percent of uh, threat vectors by implementing this. So they would love that convert into a cost figure and then say that you could save potentially 100k USD in a year. They would love that. But be, be very cognizant of the fact at the end of the year, you have to show him because he remembers numbers very well. And if you say 185K, you will very well remember to the dollar value with the penny, what has been uh, sent value also along with the dollar value. So you are, you are mandated to show that value. Otherwise, then he will, at the renewal, he will definitely ask you saying that show where all you committed and show me all the value what you have done. 
Any questions? Hope I'm making sense. This is uh, this is a fantastic uh, point, Sridhar. Uh, on that note, I would just like to uh, say that uh, you know we can take. We don't have to rush through this. We can take as much time as you have. Uh, there is no hard stop at eleven. Uh, so we we can continue as long as people are interested and you, know, you have the time. Now that's what I want to know, uh, Rajiv. Is is it interesting to them or they are already yes, aware absolutely. of it? I know. More. I think uh, say that it was very uh, very interesting to see this. Right again, obviously. Uh, we look at it saying different CSOs will be different, but being able to box them into four broad categories and putting in one or two key slides to kind of relate to them is extremely useful. So this definitely is whatever you've covered in the last two, uh, the two slides you have touched upon till now has been very useful. Shridhar. Thank you, Rajesh. How about others? Yeah, I had a question on this, uh, Shridhar. I had a question earlier to this one as well. So I'll just post that question. You can feel free to answer now or later in the context of your slides. So one was you're saying don't sell a platform, sell a don't sell a product, sell a platform, right? Um, and you have already so many vendors out there in your mix today. But still, when we come, we come in as one more vendor to you. So how do you position uh, saying that you know it's a platform? Because is it like to say that we integrate with the existing products that you already have, so you don't have to throw out uh, things? Uh, so if you can touch upon that uh, perspective. And the second question is about this slide. When you have different kinds of CSOs here, it is good to box them. But uh, who are the decision makers in terms of technical decision makers and business decision makers out here? Are they the same person or do they have, do they work as a team over here? Excellent uh, question. Second one is absolutely one I want to touch upon in depth. And that is what me and Rajiv also discussed. So, Chetan, let me answer your first question where um, you said, what was that question? What was that? Uh, Platform versus product. Platform versus how product. To position it. See, um, Chetan, I never said that you should not have a product in in uh, in in your kitty the, the the innovation starts as a product that is how most of you have evolved and you should realize that over a period of time selling as a product alone is not going to suffice that's what i meant you need to bundle all your because many of many of your friends here have five six products together in in catering into the same domain for example um email itself they have some five pointed solutions all I said is make it as a platform, offer it as a technology which will cater to you. You can just plug and play with Office 65 and then say that these four things can be offered to you. These three th things can be offered to G Suite. These three can be, the, all of them could be offered to you on an on-prem customer. So that is what I meant. I never said that don't don't sell product itself. So if, if that is what I communicated, please uh, um, I mean, correct my understanding here. The, the, all I mentioned is product is good. You are flexible. You are good to start quickly and then make it uh, come to the market very fast compared to a standard uh, vendor. Uh, what I meant was make it as a platform so that you are not going to lose that customer because this, this product, what, what feature or product you have is bundled by the large vendor in his, in his uh, kitty. Take for example, today we were just discussing one of your friends with, uh, say they have something called uh, automated detection. Uh, I mean, the moment someone identifies a phishing uh, issue, they can just click on a button and then it will automate detect and then go identify all the vendors who are there in the, uh, sorry, all the users who got the same phishing mail and then delete that and then give a statistic, say how many clicked. This has been added as part of Microsoft itself today. Mm -hmm. If you have 10 customers who are using your content solution today, you may lose them because they are, the Microsoft has already provided that solution. So you should bundle and then make it as a platform. It, it, be, it becomes uh, the stickiness with the customer is also very high. Also, the customer may not lose, okay, this one product only, no, but I have another four which, which the, the startup vendor is giving for me. That's what I meant. Okay. Second, who is a decision maker in this four tribes? That's a very valid point. You should identify that when you go for a meeting first time. Uh, trust me, there are different, as I said, in, in different tribes, there are different people who will be a decision maker. And if, if it is the second tribe, right, trust me, the CISO is going to be the final decision maker. He will understand the nuts and bolts of how it is going to work and he is going to make a decision by himself. The moment he, he kind of says something, you know, saying that, hey, call that guy, let's uh, let's have this conversation, then your pitch is already successful. So he is calling someone who is going to take it forward. Security as enabler, he is going to look at only business value. What is the business value you're going to bring uh, to the table? How it is going to help the business? How it is going to help the business run efficiently? 
compliance person is going to look at how I'm going to uh, help in, in building the compliance requirement, how it is going to help me in um, building, uh, what do you say, uh, achieving that extra compliance what I have. So that that is the person who will look at it. There will be definitely a layer below them who will evaluate the technical capabilities and then certify it. But if you want to get a decision at that point, no, tackle at this layer, what is that you make a pitch? Security as enabler, show them the business value. Security as a technologist, tell them the security and then uh, talk to them in the technology language and then say how it is going to address that solve the problem of at the technology layer. Security as a compliance, show them the compliance value, what is that it will help, help and then how it is going to help in achieving that compliance is done. Security as a cost center, show them the value of money, what is going to come. For example, someone talked about uh, how they're going to help in differentiating a bot versus uh, uh, human activity. If you could ask them, help them, uh, they arrive at some value and then say that, see, this is what potentially your customer, your, uh, your employees are spending time. This is a dollar value for them. This is the customers you're losing per month. This is a dollar value. This is the uh, loss you're making because of the fraud. This is a dollar value. Sum it up, show them the dollar value. You already have a decision made. You can work with the layer below to do a POC. You can work with the layer below to do a technical evaluation. You can work with the layers below to show that. After all these things, whatever you committed to the CISO in this four categories of tribes, make a pitch saying that this is how I'm going to. Uh, so convert your point of uh, value, sorry, proof of value also in that POE, also in that sense, what is there. And definitely there will be two, three stakeholders in this organizations. Each of them also want to know technology, give them that view all so that you have a full fledged thesis degree, degree view report when you complete your POE and then take it to the table. Okay. Thank Hope you. I said, I mean. Hi, Mohit here. I have a question. Uh, do you see CTO playing any of the role as part of a decision making? Because you said the second vertical is security as a technology, right? So, so do you see uh, a startup needs to even influence PTO in order to make a pitch and then uh, get aligned as part of the journey? See, uh, very valid question, Mohit. Um, you should, that is where I gave indication saying that you should also look where does the CSO organization fits in that uh, enterprise. Uh, I have seen CISOs reporting to Myself, I have reported to CEO. I have I've seen CISOs reporting to uh, CIO. I have seen CISOs reporting to CISO. CIO is coming down drastically. Uh, reporting to the legal counsel, the, 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 the head of legal. I have seen CISOs reporting to CTOs. I have seen CISOs reporting to uh, who else? CFO. Uh, I have seen CISOs reporting to the chief risk officer. So in this case, if CISO is reporting CTO, definitely there is a lot of technology influence. That's what I said. You should you should look at it more. Definitely there will be a call out saying that let us let us uh, discuss with my boss, and let us if it's a large uh, deal, right? Definitely he needs to have a view from his boss. Then there may be a POU re uh, report discussion or a readout when it happens. His boss would be there. If it is a CRO, then you need to talk again in the same language. If it is a uh, CFO is going to sit in the discussion when you are making a readout of the report, then definitely you need to talk the dollar values. If it is a business person, a CEO, uh, when, uh, my earlier organization, I used to report to the CEO. Absolutely a business person, he wants to know in and out of how business is going to benefit, how it is going to interrupt my business, how it is going to help my business grow. That way you should, you should talk in that terms. Thank you. And Sridhar, many of the startups, cybersecurity startups here could also be targeting SMEs that don't officially have the role of a CISO, right? It might just be the tech CTO who doubles as a CISO and whatnot. Definitely, then the second layer is very powerful. And uh, trust me, CTOs also have a cost uh, view because if you go and talk to a CTO in Airtel, go and talk to a CTO in Reliance Geo, right? The, they control a lot of technology aspect as well as they are they are also mandated to manage. Uh, so it, it depends to vertical to vertical also, Rajiv. Absolutely, especially I think the the financial BFS side probably stands out. Yeah, if you're selling it to Airtel, right? Definitely, the CTO also has a responsibility for compliance because of the try because of the 
critical infrastructure uh, requirements. So they have even the compliance requirements to be um, added to. Go ahead. Okay. Let's look at why is this used by technology? Any question? Hello. Was there a question? No, I don't think so. I, yeah, please okay. go ahead. Okay. So let's look at why CISOs buy technologies. So, I mean, this picture says a lot than I, I should be explaining. There is some issue which they have in hand. And that issue could be a process, that could issue could be non adherence people don't want to follow that. Or it could be just because you have something in, in front of it, people are deviating from that and then going. So there is a process issue or there is an issue in hand which CISOs want to solve. Please understand what is that issue he is trying to solve. Instead of you putting on table uh, what you have, understand what issue they have before even you making your pitch. But uh, 40, 60, what I said, 40% of it is slide is going to come from that. If you understand why, what is the issue he is having in hand, you can better align, better align with, with the solution, what he has, what uh, issue he has, and then how we're going to, even though you may have services, you may have technology products, you may have a, a good platform to solve that, but it always makes sense to understand what is this issue he is trying to solve and then customize your pitch according to them. Otherwise, you're going to make a generic pitch, which will be a Gyan session for him. He's going to just listen and then say, thank you, uh, we'll get back to you. If if you're not able to understand this issue and then uh, see the presentation doesn't need to be the first pitch itself. You, you could just connect first time, talk to him casually, understand what are the issues, then go with him, go to him next time and present something which which is very very uh, specific in, in in solving that issue and definitely give him a view saying that this is how we help you solve that problem this is this is assurance we give you this this issue ownership give it to us we will manage it then look at how the conversation goes on how many of you understand this i mean uh, at least correlate and then see if, if any experience which has helped you in this if you're taking this journey Okay. CISOs buy solution to handle large issues, handle which are in volume, which which they want to solve. Uh, one one thing I've seen is uh, the same thing what is shown in this picture. There are so many issues and they don't have people, and they have so many issues at the same time that one person cannot handle it. How do you help in doing that? That is how you should make a pitch saying that uh, some, someone put a pitch today also saying that, um, I mean, people's sc uh, skill shortage is real. Absolutely, that, that is the biggest challenge. But your pitch should be saying that I could solve the problem. This is how I, could, I can solve this problem. I can solve this problem by uh, virtue of technology. I can solve this problem by deploying my platform, which will help you in, in, in reducing that uh, so many issues being handled by the people. Today, if you take any enterprise, there's so many issues which which same person has to handle at the same time. Identify what are all those issues which which uh, he's handling or the which the industry is handling by. You don't need to be specific. For example, if you go to a, a, a telecom, you can go to a banking, you can go to a retail. The issue could be common across their uh, domain. You can just pitch for that uh, one issue which which is faced by that uh, vertical and then make a pitch saying that this is how we will solve this problem which is very recurring and very glaring in your industry and this is the outcome of it if you've already done a poc please put it any questions okay no. and this is what other problem CISOs have too much of information too much of information too much of information to digest even uh, try to look at it at one stretch so you should you should your solution if it is solving this please um, look at it that way and then say that i will help you in uh, handling things more structured i will help you in handling more uh, what do you say 
give you give you that visibility in a more structured way you can you can you can i can help you in prioritizing issues i can help you in uh, taking a call which which is very very high impact for you that that will fly that those are all the reasons why ciso's by product is it is it uh, someone which today also so can an organization work without a siem i'm sure many of you are security professionals you can answer yeah yeah absolutely uh, uh, they can run without a siem uh, perfect so how how can that be achieved the person you are speaking with has put your call on hold please stay on the line ನೀವು ಮಾತನಾಡುತ್ತಿರುವ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರೆಯನ್ನು ಹೋಲ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಲೈನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿಯೇ ಇರಿ ಜಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಬಾತ್ ಕರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ ರಖಾ ಕೃಪಾ ಲೈನ್ ಪರ್ ಬನೆ ರಹೆ ದರ್ಸನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪುಟ್ ಯೋರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಆನ್ ದ ಲೈನ್ ನೀವು ಮಾತನಾಡುತ್ತಿರುವ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರೆಯನ್ನು ಹೋಲ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಲೈನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿಯೇ ಇರಿ ಜಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಬಾತ್ ಕರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ ರಖಾ ಕೃಪಾ ಲೈನ್ ಪರ್ ಬನೆ ರಹೆ ದರ್ಸನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪುಟ್ ಯೋರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಆನ್ ದ ಲೈನ್ ನೀವು ಮಾತನಾಡುತ್ತಿರುವ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರೆಯನ್ನು ಹೋಲ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಲೈನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿಯೇ ಇರಿ ಜಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಬಾತ್ ಕರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ ರಖಾ ಕೃಪಾ ಲೈನ್ ಪರ್ ಬನೆ ರಹೆ ದರ್ಸನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪುಟ್ ಯೋರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಆನ್ ದ ಲೈನ್ ನೀವು ಮಾತನಾಡುತ್ತಿರುವ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕರೆಯನ್ನು ಹೋಲ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಲೈನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿಯೇ ಇರಿ ಜಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಬಾತ್ ಕರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ ರಖಾ ಕೃಪಾ ಲೈನ್ ಪರ್ ಬನೆ ರಹೆ yeah somebody i think is dialed from the mobile phone so um, if they take another call you get this message okay is everybody still online and can hear shida hello can you hear me now we can hear yes well, yeah shida go ahead yeah sorry sorry for the interruption these are look for solutions which will help in prioritizing these are look for solutions which will give them that actionable intelligence even though this word is very widely used and uh, uh people do understand what it means but it takes a lot to build that and then give it back to ciso uh, what is required is give them actually what they should be doing if if you go and look at many reports of uh, threat intelligence all those things go and apply a patch <laughs> is there something a ciso or a cio can do it absolutely no always i feel, uh, i have been telling my team and also whenever i meet uh, vendors if you could tell exactly what patch to apply and link the cve to to that patch what what is causing that issue right that is the actionable intelligence which companies look for block malicious ip address how will they do 90% of the ip addresses in the globe today are forget 90 99% of the ip addresses are malicious even that 1% what remains have must have a reputation of earlier or sometime in the past having a malicious reputation to so give them time and then say that block this ip address for next 15 days one month perpetual blocking is not going to help attackers also know that today i block and then after six months i'm going to take a new set of ip address for my cnc not even six months even six hours they will release that ip and then take a new ip address somewhere in different globe so help them in prioritizing help them in giving actually the the actionable intelligence what helps today the information flow is so you this is how the the ti reports comes out saying that block ip error malicious ip patch the systems have a strong hardening policies tell them that two things what has to be hardened to mitigate that risk hardening would, would have been done organizations 100% takes hardening seriously but is 100% hardened that's a question but uh, two parameters can be 100% hardened take my words you cannot take the cis benchmark and then do a 100% hardening of the entire enterprise never works tell them the two parameters quickly to address this risk harden this that solution really is what 
people look that kind of recommendation people really uh, love to have in front of them any questions okay see how do CISOs look at vendors there are only two types of vendors because I talk to a lot of CISOs. We also chit chat a lot in a WhatsApp group. Also, we meet uh, frequently in, in sessions. Thanks to you guys, you are in a lot of seminars and all, right? There are only two kinds of vendors who, who kind of do the job for us. The first is one who helps you build the six pack and be a strong CISO. The next is who make you look like a strong six pack, but doesn't support you for a long. So how good we are in both of this, please introspect yourself, where we want to be, how we want to be taking this journey. Because these are the only two ways. Either I am six pack or I'm being made to look like six pack. The second one is very, very risky. I have seen many organizations taking that journey and then failing because you may put a shiny, uh, very glossy, finished product but it is not going to help you at all and there are trust me uh, I'm, I'm sure you also know there are many vendors who promise a lot of stuff and then deliver very very similar to what the second slide looks like just make you look very strong and then do it but when an attack happens and when an incident that happens none of this will help you any questions i've taken a little bit of liberty in putting it bluntly but this is how CISOs actually look like take my words Any thoughts? I mean, you are open to refute this and say this is not the way we do. Happy to discuss on that. Yeah, this only comes with reputation, right? So how do we do it in the first go for a startup? No, you have to support also. Uh, who's this? Yeah, this is Chetan here. Yeah, Chetan, please. Uh, there. Hmm. Yeah, so this one, what you show is uh, comes with uh, reputation. Uh, so for a startup and talking to the CISO uh, no, so for the first time. See, I don't think so because I know first time how successful uh, startups support continuously the customers, right? Be with the customers and help them achieve the objective. It is, it is not to do with reputation. See, reputation comes, yes, it plays a major role. You have to be reputed uh, to do that. But not all reputed companies are also successful in, in uh, sustaining their products, right? And this is critical for startups, right? Because uh, you know, uh, if you're a really early stage startups, all uh, all you can and if you all that you can show is that okay, this is your first startup, then a lot of uh, credibility or whatever has to be put on your pedigree or where you work, what you've done before. But I think what Shigar is also saying that even in terms, just in terms of the solution itself or the problem you're addressing, that in order to you know build credibility with with a POC or with a pitch with the presentation, uh, all those things. I mean, there's no single silver bullet, but all those things I think add up, right? And ultimately over the journey of uh, not, you know, of working with the CISO over time, uh, even though, you know, even though the CISO has not adopted your technology, maybe keeping in touch, all these things over time, it's a, in supporting the CISO to look like the first image as opposed to the second image, right? Where you uh, have a new shiny thing, which doesn't really work in the longer term, from a product perspective or from a uh, relationship perspective, I think those are all the points. I mean, that's that's what I understood. Is, is that? Uh... Yes, yes, Rajiv. So second is also uh, in the subsequent slides I'll be touching upon. Um, implementation alone is not what uh, matters. See, uh, security is a journey. You may implement today, then the threat vectors change. Uh, the, the, the attackers are also earning their bread and butter by attacking. So. They also continuously evolve and then look, how do I evade this? How do I remove this obstacle which is there in front of me? That obstacle is nothing but your solution. That obstacle is nothing but your technology. So they continuously work to evade this. If you take, uh, I have seen uh, live attacks which, which kind of evades a technology. I have seen attacks which evades a tool what has been put. That is, that, that's a, the, those are all very powerful tools and technologies which attackers have learned uh, how to evade this. Those are all uh, things. So if 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 you if that happens, right? You have you have implemented a strongest of strong technology in your environment, 
and you still see a uh, issue happening you still see an incident happening the attackers have breached that control and then moved away from it and then still entered into your environment then the first thing the CISO would do is call you saying that I have an issue at hand and uh, can you help me? Can you be, uh, can you support my team? Most powerful companies which emerge out of uh, this, right? They would put all their resources and help the CISO to kind of come out of it. And they will, they will not shy away in saying that, yes, we have an issue and we, we found the what is the issue in our product. Definitely, we will we will work on it and then close it. Everyone understands that software and technology is just, uh, I mean, it, it's not perpetual to protect you until end of uh, era. It is it is there at moment. That moment it helps. That moment it protects. How good you uh, can maintain that relationship, support him during crisis is it worth all all matters. Take for example when the the WannaCry attack happened, right? There are vendors who went hiding for weeks together. They never even came out. Whoever claimed, right, I can detect zero days, I can um, uh, thwart zero day attacks. Those are all the second picture who are there just showed that muscle saying that, yes, I can protect you, I can build you six pack, vanished. They never even emerged. And those are all the companies today you're seeing shutting down. Those are all the companies which you're seeing getting spinned off. I don't need to tell anything more than that because this is a recorded session. You can correlate which are all the companies which have been sold, which have been slowly perishing by itself. They claim those tall claims. And trust me, during that period, if they have come work with the CISO saying that, yes, we understand, we, we made this commit, they never came. They just hide, uh, went for hiding during that period. CISO had to struggle by themselves, uh, find what is the best by all themselves. And many companies I've seen came, uh, supported the, uh, the uh, CISOs. We have, yes, we have seen this. Can we uh, offer you help? Can we work with your team? Can I can I participate in your uh, effort to uh, clean up this issue? That really is a differentiator. You can, you can implement beautifully, you can sustain it, offer that help when there is an issue, continuously ping them saying that, uh, is there anything which we can do? That's a relationship. Any questions on this? Got it. Uh, thank you. Perfect. So what does uh, CISOs look for? A great partnership, a reliable uh, partner, and who's trustworthy, who can who can be trusted blindly. Even it's a two-way partnership. So even if, if there is an emergency, I've seen, I have myself experienced, we don't even have uh, uh, need to have a partnership for that vendor. He offers it so beautifully, come, let's work. And then I will support you in doing that. And definitely you would be uh, called out as a niche vendor when, when you support him during a crisis, when you support him in, in, in helping handling a crisis. That's where the great partnerships build. And you will be looked upon, you will be looked upon as a vendor who will support in long term to gain that trust. And always uh, CISOs have eye of suspicion on the vendor. Is he going to have given him a chance? Is there in my environment? Is he going to support me? Is he going to uh, fulfill all my objectives? Or is there just to be there? Shridhar Mohit here, I have a question, right? Yes. Uh, let's take a hypothetical scenario. You are sitting on the CISO chair and uh, a vendor or a vendor comes in and he has a very fantastic product, right? I'm not talking about six packs or not to be a six, six, six pack uh, based product. Uh, nice product, but he has not done any deal yet, right? So what are the parameters you will consider because he has not shown the product to the world and you you would be the first customer to look for that product, right? So I mean, I'm sure you you must have gone through a similar kind of uh, uh, scenario in the past, right? So what what would be a key uh, aspects that needs to be looked upon uh, while uh, you are pitching for a first customer? Okay, so um, Mohit, very uh, interesting question and really um, relevant for this discussion. So uh, Mohit, this is where I touched, right? Even if it is a fantastic product, right? I don't have a problem statement in front of me and you've been presenting that fantastic product in front of me. I would only be listening to you for Gyan. 
you got me yeah if i have a problem statement right definitely i'll be interested in knowing how you are going to solve my problem that you can pick it up in the first 2 3 minutes itself what is my interest level in your thing the moment i say yes this is this okay tell me something this then the second question you answer third question i ask say, something similar on the similar lines can you answer me this then you can very well clearly understand there is some problem he is also having which i can leverage here second on your on your same question on answering the second part of it if i have, if you don't have any credibility in in uh, in, uh, in showing that you have already ex existing customer base or or uh, you have uh, not been de demonstrated saying that you have deployed it elsewhere and all doesn't matter in today's world if mm -hmm. you're who is going to solve my problem what i have in my hand definitely you will be given an opportunity and uh, i'm not saying 90 100% of the cso's will be in that uh, gamut but there are uh, trust me 70 80% of cso's take for example the largest uh, buyer in, in, in this side of the world the reliance uh, cso reliance industry cso durga sab he mm -hmm. will give opportunity for any vendor i think kritikal is also working with them so he will give an opportunity for any vendors immaterial of their size capacity or definitely is a uh, I mean, hard bargainer on price and all but he is one who will give you opportunity without even you having credibility right okay rashmi there, there is a large community which will support uh, the the startup uh, ecosystem unless otherwise you are not touching his problem area and then uh, developing your uh, pitch on that you will lose him if, if he doesn't have a problem at all and you are also wasting your time in talking to a person who doesn't even have a problem of that nature but uh, does ciso open up uh, to a strange startup right very, uh, difficult, very, because... very difficult uh, thing they will not open up openly say that yeah i do have this problem you need to do that homework and then understand this does this industry have this problem does this uh, vertical have this problem if you understand that then you can start your conversation saying that this is what the, the industry is going through this is this is what we have known and this is what you are trying to solve and if you already have done some amount of pocs you can tell that and if you don't have any credibility then prove that this is what we can help you in solving it the moment you offer him right he would definitely open not 100% but definitely give you a small window of opportunity to explain your technology right if you use that the small window of opportunity to your best of capability then the door is open for you sure thank you hey shridhar this uh, this aurav here from new wide uh, one question so basically uh, i mean I, i i agree with a lot of good points that you mentioned today and one of the that you definitely mentioned was time is very critical for everybody so we as startups when we typically come to you ciso's or we come to cios or cto or just in general any b2b organization large organization so one thing we expect is let's say uh, everything has been agreed and we uh, we accept for a poc or a pilot so what i have what at least i have seen and what other what, whatever i talk with other startup founders as well over a period of time most of us agree that we get pocs we get pilots but most of the large organizations shy away from paying for the pilot or paying for the time that we are spending so is there something uh, that you guys talk about this or that you guys think like why why does that happen and why can't you why can't the pocs or the time which is being spent for the for the overall goodness like you have accepted this pilot you accepted this poc that means there's a problem that means something is happening so why can't organizations pay for this and uh, it is a it is a mutual mutual help for both any on that it's a very generic question by the way no no i agree i agree for so trust me it's nothing to do with cisos or cios or ctos the the culture which is there in the large enterprises right poc is something looked upon like you have to come and demonstrate your product capabilities and if you are solving my problem take the deal and then uh, make it happen so you have to be very clear in in uh, see i have seen many vendors uh, not only no, I, I, that is very uh, what i say uh, unfortunate in, in in indian side of uh, this side of the world where indian companies don't uh, globally also i don't see any companies any anywhere uh, people get paid for pocs except for few european uh, companies but otherwise i have seen australian companies right australian startups and australian product companies they demand the customers who don't pay for uh, pocs tell me what are their success criteria let's draft the success criteria very clearly i'm little bit <coughs> of a question 
perhaps my sophisticated yes i know where your concerns are you spend two months of time in doing a poc investing uh, all the efforts what is uh, required from your side also and then nothing comes out of that poc it, it turns out to be neither they understand the problem because that is the fundamental issue nor they understand what is their problem statement nor they will be able to give you that exact statement what is it so the australian companies i've seen very clearly calling out saying that give me your problem statement tell me what is your success here what you feel is is a uh, successful uh, parameters for this evaluation the moment you start drafting those right they will also be alert and attentive saying that yes in case the companies refuse to pay for poc this is another approach i'm giving you sort of i have seen this successful companies think twice saying that okay if, if this vendor is onboarded for my poc i need to be very sure on my uh, what are the success criteria and make it draft and then enter into agreement with the poc and then start your poc if you are starting a poc for the sake of doing a poc at the end of it you will also lose time and you will also lose effort energy in, in doing your pocs and nothing comes out of it so you have to be very clear but i have seen how people leverage startups especially leverage pocs are saying that the two pocs they will uh, use and then say that the, the, the other side of the company is also doing a poc in the final leg of uh, signing up that's another way of looking at it so it's nothing to do with cio ctos or ciso that's uh, large enterprises believe that uh, um, what do you say uh, poc is vendor's responsibility to come demonstrate that they have a capability and they can solve the problem and then take a deal i i, I agree with you sridhar because when we when i when we were also most of us like we are all we have worked in uh, enterprises uh, or b2b companies before so when it was larger company yes the larger company had bandwidth and all and uh, we could we always had budget for pocs even as a as a vendor vendor company we had budgets for pocs and the company understood that it takes time but as a startup we don't have budgets most of us and whatever time we are spending has to be appreciated by the other side as well and again there is a very very strong saying that you know, saying right so both the companies would be very serious on a poc or very serious on the effort they are putting when there is money involved from both sides on the table See that is where I have I have also told you just now we spoke right sort of um, whom you are talking also are you talking to the right stakeholder and starting a POC you just now mentioned saying that it uh, the conversation went uh, numb right mm. so whom whom you are talking to that also matters a lot who is that giving a buy in for a POC right because if, if you go and talk to the gentleman saying that. Uh, we have invested so much of time effort this is the output of it. let me know how we can take it forward he is a sensible person he understands and appreciate uh, companies putting that so much of time and effort and if he sees a value only he will say for a poc trust me uh, sort of right. the, when you put larger in the organizations hierarchy they would definitely know uh, they don't do pocs for learning and if you are doing a poc with the tech teams right i have seen they just do it for their own understanding their own learning and to test the waters how does this technology work Right. Yeah, that makes sense, uh, Shridhar. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. And uh, Shridhar, to add to that, I think another viewpoint is uh, to treat your POC effort under your marketing budget if you can afford it, because in this case, that's really what is right. It's not an end goal. It's really, like you said, evaluating the seriousness of how this prospect can really turn into a paying customer. So it is, it is what it is. If that person is willing, you know, they are willing to pay you for your POC effort. equally they are putting effort themselves besides the payment because there are a lot of enabling and other uh, uh, things to be done so they are spending resources so depending on the size of the company that you are targeting they might or might not have the budget and if it is a smaller company poc can very literally translate into a paying customer because if they go ahead with the poc even without paying you they have put in all this effort in you know testing it out and uh, evaluating integrating whatever and even if there is a better competitor that comes along they might still go with you right just because they have gone through this effort and they don't see this uh, marginal benefit from from your competitors agree okay, ajay see it's an investment and unless adi you break through some four five companies it is it is an investment you are making and i know it's a painful thing but uh, that's how it is my view take a buy in from the tallest leader in the organization and then move on poc don't just get excited for some tech person saying that yeah let's do a poc
so what are all the sorry this is i started with five then i ended up with uh, <laughs> seven points tell a story that's what i, I really uh, like when you when you make a story out of the issue what what problem statement they have what is that globally the industry is facing specific to that industry if you go for a, a telecom talk about telecom industry how is it impacted what is the issue which is there do some homework don't uh, see I've, I've i've told multiple times also in this uh, one on one pitch don't uh, talk too much about overall statistics and all that that every ceo knows it and he knows uh, each and every problem because he is he is sitting on the chair what i showed you in the first slide the hot seat is already there and he's he's uh, facing the heat not only the top bottom also so he he's aware of it keep your pitch very specific to the context what you're talking explain who you are that's more than enough i mean in a verbal term with one slide saying that this is what we are and this is the place we stand and create an identity for yourself many times uh, i have seen in the morning uh, sessions also the seven startups which presented um, many times they were reiterating we are small we are small we are small one statement is more than enough you don't need to reiterate multiple times and if you are reiterating the same thing then it, it uh, just something strikes in the mind saying that hey this guy will uh, be there to support me after one year or not is a question you are going to put him in his mind uh, make it make it yeah we are we are a strong workforce of 30 people period that's it you have made the statement what you want to tell him saying that we are small that's it you don't need to reemphasize again and again saying that we are small and uh, somewhere i saw in the first slide itself someone putting a price this is this is like a i mean my view vendor association with ciso is like a marriage uh, uh, arranged indian marriage so there are a lot of rituals to be crossed before we talk about the price if you are putting the price in the first uh, pitch itself you are losing the customer i'll tell you why um, there are so many nuances uh you want to explain to the customer bring uh, the value what value proposition you have on table and then probably you may end up on a poc or you just talk to your uh, see uh, just answering sorrow about so you don't need to do a full fledged poc why don't you just do a paper based poc sit with the team understand the problem map it to your solution create a value of 10 uh, features at what you have and what is that problems each uh, has been quoted identify can i solve this 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 take a commitment show them that value saying that this is what i could solve out of 10 problem statements your team has said i could solve nine of them and this is what it is if you want to do a real pilot of all these things we can engage that you can do and then let's talk price the first pitch itself if you are putting a uh, price without even the, the the nothing known i'm am i uh, leaving the customer just with showing the price price is the last thing you will definitely negotiate there will be a lot of ciso is not going to negotiate the price please understand that ciso will only have a budget and which will be negotiated by a procurement office if you go to large enterprise there are procurement office which will which will negotiate the price with different uh, tactics all of you guys know what what are those and i have seen multiple places where people um put a lot of effort in understanding the industry the overall threat surface all those things you need to make very relevant to the problem what you're going to uh, i mean uh, what do you say address and anchor your pitch with strong data points and make your make your slides which which is more conversational than being very formal you, you, your slide should have very basic information and it should be more conversational where they also open up and talk how do you make them talk how do you make it more conversational the very minimal uh, data points are there in the slide and the more you talk and and the worst thing i have seen in many uh, vendor meetings is there will be some 15 people or 10 people will come for the meeting and hardly two three will talk go prepared if if there is a business person let him talk business if there is a technical person let him talk technical technical moderate it equally saying that this is how we will uh, run this pitch and wherever required call in the technical person to help in answering that if if only a business person tries to talk technical bad story if a technical person tries to talk a business again a bad story equally balance it and if you are doing the same person is doing both the job best only one or two person should be there to talk and i have seen uh, uh, 
very bad discussions happening because of, there are some 10 people in the room from the vendor side, hardly anyone talks and only one or two will be talking. Then what is the value of remaining 10 people? Are they just mute spectators? Have your content very light. Don't make heavy presentations with too much of data. People cannot read so much of information uh, put put uh, when when uh, you put it in a presentation and then make them read. Nobody is going to read. They are just listening. They are seeing your presentation for a high level. Next is uh, don't don't put screenshots of your solution. Just now we saw one one uh, discussion also. Too much of presentation. I mean, too much of slides on their uh, console. Too much of screenshots of their uh, platform being shown. I've seen conversations moving into different tangent where they'll say, oh, why I would put a bar chart? Why not a pie chart? Why that pie chart, uh, the color of uh, the high is shown as uh, blue? Why not red? That is not the conversation you want to have in the first two discussions, right? That's a last conversation. All the feedback can come from the customer after you engage them or, or before you want to see their feedback. This is what it is. Uh, anything you specific? Yes. Okay. Wherever possible. Align the use cases specific to that customer industry so that he also understands and appreciates. Don't don't one size fits all never works in security. And I've seen many times the general conversations being talked and you lose the customer in between. See, that would be good if you can talk about uh, the fourth one, right? Start your elevator pitch with a question, right? What do you kind of be uh, an example or something would be good to kind of able to relate to it? Yes, see, uh, for example, you can, you can say that, sir, we are coming from this organization and this is what our products do. What is your view on this uh, threats, what, what has been seen? Definitely, it will give a lot of indication for you to address those. Take, for example, when, when you are going from um, a company which, which addresses a phishing uh, attack, you could, you could engage that saying that, sir, we are coming from this organization, this is what it is, and uh, we solve phishing uh, problem, and this is, this is the solution we have. What, do you do you have a views? What, what what how is this taking a shape uh, in in, in uh, being a veteran in this industry? How do you see this? Then you will start first question very general. First statement would be very generic. Second statement would be very sp little specific to the industry what is talking. And if you engage him more, then he will say, yeah, we also have this problem in our company. Here. Last last two weeks back, someone clicked here and then provided the credentials. Then you have the problem statement spelled out. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I'm almost done. Sorry, I think it was started for 45 minutes. It went a little more than that. Not at uh, all. Please go ahead. Questions, please. Uh, Sridhar, uh, this is Bhavin here. I, I do not have uh, uh, a question, though I have uh, some comment to make. Uh, firstly, wonderful presentation and a very, very good mentorship session. One of the best that we've had so far. Uh, we are at that stage where we've been doing so many pitches to our customers. And somewhere, uh, you know, I got a feeling that, uh, yes, there is a lot to introspect. And some of these aspects which you've covered, they are very, very relevant. And uh, it really, it will really help us to uh relook at the way we've been doing things you know so we have strong stories uh we have strong clientele but putting it together uh to a CISO from a perspective of what the CISO needs uh which is more industry specific uh be very relevant to the issues that they might be facing and solve the problem so uh certainly uh, thanks a lot for that you know uh, I was quite amazed with the way even your presentation was put up, it, it had very less text and a lot of visuals. So you have a lot of, uh, so that you can get focus uh, from the CISO as well you know, while you talk. Thank you so much for that again. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Bhavin. Thank you, my pleasure. Hey, and before people drop off, uh, we've been, I think, requesting feedback from you all. Uh, Bas has been sending a Google form. Uh, please do take like it's like I think three three radio buttons you need to click. So please take like two seconds of your time, and it'll help us certainly fine tune our future cohorts and future sessions. And yeah, we we do have time for more questions uh, and discussion as long as Sridhar uh, you know is here. So please uh, take it away. Any other questions?
So, Vallabha asked a very, very high level question. Vallabha, what your suggestion for startup company? So, I think this entire presentation was that uh, Vallabha could give a view saying that uh, what you should do. So, problem statements, you guys know more than me. You guys uh, talk to a lot of CISOs, understand. And which type of problem startups have to work on, okay? See, there are, there are good amount of problems in email. There are good amount of problems. See, one of the fundamental problem I would say to focus for startups is we are too dependent on um, people today for, for security. So cut down that. Definitely CISOs would love that. It's not we want to reduce the job. We want to be more. Uh, see, my my team, uh, at least uh, when, when I want to build a team, when I want to manage a team, I don't want my team to be doing eyeball monitoring. I don't want my team to be doing 24 bar 7 monitoring. It doesn't add any value in any aspect. Trust me, the second night shift person who sits and monitors a sock, right? Absolutely, he is not a, a person is not built to monitor the console of a threat alert at 1 a.m. the night. He will always want to sleep. In that sleepy eyes, we are expecting him to identify a real-time security attack. So these are all the problem statements. We are too dependent on people today who is going to manage security, who is going to monitor security. Reduce that. Make people intelligent. How many of the solutions today we, we spoke? Seven startups. Very few are actually using AML. Leverage artificial intelligence to the max as much as possible. We have been, security has been, uh, what do you say, a segment in in, uh, in any company which is drip, deprived of very good solution. We have been having pointed solutions. In fact, when I speak to large CISOs, I mean, trust me, global um, uh, Fortune 10 CISOs I speak. All of them are taking a journey to consolidate security. All of them are feeling the pinch of having one of the largest company in the world. Oh, okay, the size. Okay, half a trillion revenue global company. They are taking a journey to reduce the uh, footprint of security. They have hundreds and hundreds of vendors. They want to reduce it. So how you can help them in, in, in doing that job? Can you be one point? I mean, definitely not one solution. One vendor is going to provide everything, but at least you can be their partner for one of the domain, DNS security. You can be their email security. You can be their uh, human security. How do you build a solutions or platform for making human? Someone said uh, making uh, humans as the first line of defense. Have you thought through that? So there are many things. Uh, well, if you, if you just uh, take a CISO talk with a coffee, right? He will give you all the problem statement in the world. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? So I think there was, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, was there, was that a question? Yeah, so I had a uh, question. Uh, this is Chetan again from Synchronize. So in this world, right, where we are in this pandemic world, I think work from home scenarios are taking up, uh, you know, priority. So how do we address that as CISOs really looking at that? And in this world of virtual uh, pitching, so how do you suggest, you know, the best uh, pitch to CISOs? Very interesting. Um, so webinars are killing. Even Anand Mahindra wrote a very beautiful um thing on this webinar itself so really a tough time Chetan. and uh, if, if someone is presenting please ensure you get a first class in the mon morning i mean when i said first lot let it be around 9 a.m in a day and try to get a slot something which is starting of the week not the end of the week this is what i would say apart from whatever i said because trust me from morning till evening there is nothing other than attending calls Earlier, we used to meet people, see, that's all gone. So very tough times, even though there is huge demand uh, for security these days. The problem is getting time, talking to them, and then making it happen. As as, as far as possible, please uh, enable your camera and so that at least he will see you and then he can enable the camera back. 
at least i saw that at least in the seven cohort uh, seven uh, meeting i enabled my camera all all through the session very few of you enable it back so when you enable that camera at least they can also see you see you and you can also see whether he's connected or he are you losing him you need to quickly do a course correction of pulling back more technology and talking business or scenario in front of him talking more business or you can accordingly moderate otherwise what will happen is you will be talking and you will not even get a sense of what is that uh, the other person is up to so these are all peripheral uh, advices i would give other than the whatever i have already spoken thank you thank you all right um if there are no further questions then i then i would like to take the time to thank mr shridhar govardhan uh, thank definitely you. thank you for your time shridhar and uh, shridhar has been in this industry for a long time and has definitely been a, a very helpful very great supporter of uh, this initiative of hack uh, and sisec so thank you very much and this was i think there was a lot of things that uh, you packed into this session shridhar so a lot of uh, you know a lot of technical insights a lot of uh, sort of psychological insights in terms of how to structure the presentation how to prioritize how to frame it when to reach how to reach all those aspects so if people uh, have uh, other questions then do uh, do reach out um, and we can see how to enable you know further engagements with reader or with uh, others um so with that thanks again and uh, this was the ninth um ninth mentor session so as part of this program um we plan to have one more 